All right, welcome back to the Halftime Report. We're live today from One Market out in San Francisco. Our calls of the day, two Dow stocks are in focus. We're going to start with Nike. Take a look at the stock. It's barely getting a lift today. Uh, it's coming off its third straight day of losses. It's the second worst Dow stock year to date. It's the third worst Dow stock month to date. And it's below its 250-day moving averages. Stephanie Link, you, you want me to stop yet or, or, or keep going on this? <laughs> Nothing's huh. new. The stock's down 18 huh. percent year to date, so I think it's reflecting a lot of these bad, bad uh, things out there. Unless you think it's going to get worse, and I think there are some suggestions, no, I... uh, you know, around the way that that it might in fact get worse, both from a, a narrative standpoint. They question. Here's what they say, by the way, in the note: We're removing. This is Morgan Stanley. They remove their position in Nike. Uh, they say they're removing it due to execution and industry headwinds. That are likely to weigh on top line and margin trajectories. Um, that sounds like a prediction that things are going to get worse before they get better for this stock. Well, look, the macro is definitely challenging around the world, but the stock is down 18 percent year to date, and it actually trades at about 24 times forward, which is at the low end. Its 10-year average is 28 times forward. Why does it have a premium, and why should it have a premium? Because this is world-class company. They have the, they're the number one brand in China. Michael Jordan, that brand is growing at 35 percent constant currency on a consistent basis. They're going from, they're doing more DTC business, which is margin accretive. I think this company over time has earnings power of something like 650 by fiscal 26. And that's going to be because they actually get EBIT margins to the high teens from 11 percent today. And how are they going to do it? Lower freight costs. FX, inventory reductions, lower input costs, all those things have been massive headwinds for Nike, and I think that's going to turn it around. And in addition, I think the demand still will stay strong. And I just feel like this is blue chip on sale. It trades at a discount to Lulu. Lulu's at 35 times. I'm, I get it. It's a little bit faster growth, but I think that Nike is just, again, world class, good balance sheet, and I don't think they have execution problems at all. All right, Joe, um, do you want to counter that? Because, you know, this is my bet. This is not you saying it. And, and, I, and I know you're restricted in terms of, of what you can say. My bet is that when you mm -hmm. rebalance your Joe T ETF, that Nike, it, it finds its way in the trash bin. Um, but you speak on it because you you said recently um, something that that leads me to believe you disagree with Stephanie Link. All right. So so first of all, Stephanie is defining a fundamental outlook uh, into the future that's positive for Nike. And I don't disagree with that at all. But I do believe that 2023 is a year about technicals. It's about momentum. And it's about positioning. I think fundamentals really don't sit at the top of the factor chart for 2023. And I think that what, what the entry, first of all, for us into Nike came in April. Why did we enter Nike? And I know, you know, my approach to the market is different than Stephanie. But we got caught up in the technical momentum where the stock rallied from below 85 in October of 2022 all the way above 120. This is a strong company, but it was on the technicals that we got into the stock. And the technicals have deteriorated. They're going to report earnings on September 28th, and I don't see how they're going to be able to reverse it that quickly. There are challenges as it relates to China. We know that. It appears to be troughing. But that trough is not going to reward you, I don't think, as an investor until the coming quarters. And we mentioned Lululemon. And Lululemon is a fair alternative. We, you know, I had this discussion with Steve Weiss on Monday, and Steve said you can't compare it. I don't know how you can't compare it, because if you're a shopper, you're looking at Nike and you're looking at Lululemon. And if you're a portfolio manager, you look back five years and you see Lululemon up 155 percent and Nike only up 20 percent. You look back the last three years, Lulu's up 33 percent, Nike's up 15 percent. I could keep going on with the outperformance of Lululemon. So Lululemon has treated you better as an investor. Unfortunately, in 2023, Nike has lost its technical momentum. I hope they get it back. We're long the stock. On September 28th, I hope Steph's right. I hope the fundamental positive outlook that she's in the see she's, uh, she sees in the future it comes to reality today, but I'm skeptical that that's going to occur, and we'll see what we do it at the end of October. Yeah, I mean, Steph, this note today, they cite margin headwinds from ex uh, excessive inventory might persist um, longer. So this is seems to be far more than a technical story. 
um, like the one that, that Joe sort of lays out. And, and look, to be, to be frank, I'm not sure that Nike and Lulu are the greatest comparisons and whether it's apples and oranges. To, to me, it's an, it's an easy comparison to make for not so obvious reasons. And I, I don't necessarily think that it's, it's Nike and Lulu in, in the same basket. Nike has its own issues. It's a big portion, as you said, from China, which is much weaker than I think people had any idea that it would be uh, as we sit here on September 20th of, of 2023 in the recovery. So I don't know that the Nike story gets, gets better uh, anytime soon. Lulu, to me, is its own thing. It caters to a different customer with a different kind of product, period. So China is 13 percent of total revenues. And last week, we actually saw some green shoots from China in terms of industrial production and retail sales that were double expectations and from prior levels, from prior months. So I think China is going to recover. It's taking slower than expected, no question. But I think the consumer and the pent up demand from the consumer is actually going to be a positive going forward. So that's number one. Number two, they do have the number one market share around the world in footwear. There's no question about it, a 78% market share. Number three, the margin story. Yeah, the margins have been getting really, they've been hit hard. And a lot of that is inventories. I'm not going to say that, though, that Nike is the only company that has inventory issues. Everybody has inventory issues. And those numbers have been coming down pretty quickly. And as that happens, Scott, margins will improve. And freight costs have been a very big headwind for them. That's going to improve as those prices come down. So, by the way, they also have pricing power. So, I get what you're saying. Saying. It's not been a good stock, right, year to date, but I do think it's going to be a good stock going forward if I have a 12 month time horizon. And I think that the multiple has come down and it has derated enough that the expectations are low enough that maybe they don't have to put up a great number in, uh, on the 28th. Maybe it's just in line and they're just going to make progress on inventories. And I think the stock probably would bounce on that. Joe, la lastly to you, because um, I agreed with Weiss, to be honest with you, on the argument that you guys had the other day. Nike's a footwear company. First, second, and third. L Lulu is like a, a, a specialty fitness apparel and lifestyle company. I don't know why we compare the two. Yeah. We're, I'm just going to, I'm sorry, I'm just going to completely disagree with you. I think, okay. yes, they're a footwear company. Lululemon is also a footwear company. They both they're not are a footwear emphasizing company. direct to consumer. They're not a footwear company. They have, they sell shoes. They're not, they're not a footwear company. All right. Uh, we disagree on that. And, okay. you know, as I said before, as, as a portfolio manager, when you think about apparel, you think about what your potential opportunities are for ownership. And to me, it's Nike, it's Lulu, it's Adidas, maybe it's Puma as well. I'm not so sure about that. I just, you know, I'm sorry. I just disagree with you.